Well, hello everyone. I hope you're having a great day today. Welcome to Tuesday's edition of Take 5. We're doing something a little different this week. It's called an apologetic. It comes from the Greek word apologia. It means in defense of the faith. And so that's what we titled the message this week, in defense of the rapture, because the rapture has come under attack. Well, you know, a lot of biblical Christian doctrines are under attack, but the rapture is one of those uh, that is, yesterday I, I shared with you how it's come under attack and how we need to be able to biblically defend it. Now, when I say that, that means we're supposed to have knowledge enough of what we believe that we can defend it with intelligence and integrity. This doesn't mean that we fight about it, but that we can defend our belief with the Word of God. Now, why this is important, Peter tells us that we should be able to do this, and why this is important is because not only does it defend the church's biblical stance, but it also presents the truth to those that are misled and deceived, and that's what we're doing with this concept about the rapture. Today and tomorrow, I'm going to share with you uh, the three different places in Scripture that specifically talk about the rapture. And then on Thursday and Friday, I'm going to give you five different things concerning the rapture uh, that are necessary for us to understand. And these five different things are also uh, going to put us in the place where we realize it is essential that we understand it and that we realize why it's important to be able to defend it when people come against it like they're doing in the hour in which we live. So today, we're going to look at the, the first two. We're going to look at 1 Thessalonians, and we're going to look at John, Jesus' words, actually, <coughs> to try to understand this concept we call the rapture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18 says, I do not want you to be ignorant, brothers, concerning those who have fallen asleep or who have died, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring those with him who are asleep or who are dead in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will not precede those who are dead. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Paul makes this declaration in the beginning of this passage that we just read, that he doesn't want the church to be ignorant about this thing called the rapture. He actually makes that same statement, I don't want you to be ignorant, brothers, on eight separate occasions concerning eight different very specific events. And his motivation behind writing this and, and many of the epistles was to ensure that Christians are properly informed about Christ and about the promises that he made to the church. When he says, I don't want you to be ignorant, that word ignorant means lacking knowledge or understanding or being uninformed or unaware. And that's one thing that God does not want his people to be. He does not want us to be uninformed. He does not want us to be unaware. He does not want us to have a lack of understanding. God wants us to be very much aware of the biblical principles that are recorded in his word. In our text today that we just read, Paul wants the church to understand to the best of our ability the promise of the resurrection of dead saints and the catching away of these resurrected saints along with the ones who are still living at the time. We know that and formally call this event the rapture. Now the word rapture doesn't appear in the scriptures and because of that, some people make a real silly argument about that. But there's a lot of words 
that we use to refer to things that we are aware of in the scriptures that don't actually appear in the Bible, especially the King James Version of the Bible. For instance, we believe in the Trinity, in the triune Godhead, but you won't find the word Trinity in a King James Version of the Bible or in many other translations as far as that goes. We believe in the great commission of the church, that the church is supposed to evangelize the world, but you won't find that phrase either, great commission. Uh, we believe that the devil has demons that work under him in a uh, highly organized structure, but you won't find the word demon in a lot of translations. And, and I'll be quite honest with you, as far as that goes, I, I, we believe in the Bible, but you won't find the word Bible in the Bible either. You'll find God telling us to uh, pay heed or take heed to his word or to the scriptures, but you won't find the word Bible. So it's really not fair to say that the rapture is not real because the word rapture doesn't appear. The word rapture is a Latin word that we use uh, there, and it, it come, it's actually translated from the word harpazo, and it means to snatch up, to seize, to gather, and to take away. And that's exactly what he's going to do there in 1 Thessalonians. That's what we read. But you can see another a picture of this. This is Jesus' words in John 14. He says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me and my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive. Harpazo, I will snatch, I will catch up, I will carry you away. I will receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. It's the same thing. It's the same concept. Jesus is going to snatch us up, catch us away, take us away to be with him, take us off of this planet to be with the Lord. And ever since uh, our Lord promised those early Christians that he was going to the Father's house to prepare a place for us and that he would return and take us to be with him. Believers have been looking forward to being raptured or translated or caught up to be with the Lord rather than seeing death. This is not something that's brand new, my friend. This is not something that's just a hundred years old. This is a mystery that we were taught about for the past 2,000 years, it is something that was introduced to the church. It is something that we are looking forward to, and we need to stand in defense of it. We need to understand it. We need to be aware of it, and we need to be able to present Bible uh, doctrine, Bible uh, events, Bible facts that prove that this rapture is a reality. We can see it in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Four, we can see it in Jesus' words in John chapter 14, and tomorrow we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It paints a beautiful picture of what Paul there calls the resurrection, but it's the same thing as this great event called the rapture. Hey, I've got to get out of here. It's been good being with you today. I look forward to being with you tomorrow on Wednesday's edition of Take 5. Till then, I hope you have a great day, friend. Hey, and remember this always, trust the Lord. He will never fail you.